Good morning, beautiful being. It is lovely to see you. Here I am inside out of the wind. It is very blowy out there. Um, despite the fact that it's fine, it's very blowy. We get wind at this time of the year. It's a normal spring thing. The flowers come out and then the wind flattens them. But hopefully that's not going to happen this time. So I just put on my order for well-timed winds. So we're inside, which means we do rocks. And there's nothing wrong with doing rocks. This is dioptase. Now, some people sort of expect dioptase to be very gemmy. Hello, Linda! And there is some of the really crystalline, sparkly stuff just in there. But the bigger rock, it's, it sort of looks a bit like malachite, except it's the wrong sort of texture. Um, and, you know, clearly there's lots of copper or chromium or something going on here. Copper, I think, because of all this brown green goodness that you get when you have lots of copper in the rock um, and I just think it's fabulous good morning Maria it's great to see you look at that just the texture and the different colors it's fabulous so dioptase and it's from Madagascar this one so there you go Sparkly and not sparkly, and this is um, a, it, it's a I don't know a specimen is the word. If you think I'm slightly dazed today, you're right. Something I don't know what happened in my meditation, but my brain is not really online yet. I still feel a lot out there, so um, I'm coming online slowly. Talking with crystals is a good way to get myself back online. Um, so this is danberite, and it's a lovely big jimmy crystal just like the other one wasn't you can pretty much see straight through it you can see okay there you are there's the shape of the crystal it's like something you'd have in a necklace or a pendant and then i don't and see there's other smaller crystals there as well of danberite i don't know what these blades are there's something else but I do know, because there's a little piece of paper in the box with it, um, that this is from Mexico. So there you go. It's something fabulous. And, um, I mean, those blades look a lot like mica. They do. They've got that layered thing going on. But um, it's a little bit less usual to see mica growing like this. You know, normally it's stacked up like pancakes. Um, but it's a very varied mineral, and I have another piece that comes from Russia where it looks like little granules of salt and pepper and all kinds of things, and, you know, so mica is amazing. And look at that. It's just a fabulous thing. So, oh, the other thing not to miss, see what it's grown on and, and what's underneath, what it stands on, if you like. I love this. It's a beautiful sample. And good morning to everybody. I can see there's a little number up there that tells me who's on, but it's not saying who you are. So it's lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. So today, um, and I, there was something on Friday night that inspired me to talk about this. And I'm thinking last Friday was like a million years ago. Feels like another lifetime, and that's because it was. Um, really, every day is like a new life to me. It's a long story. Um, or maybe not. Maybe I'll tell some of that today. What I want to talk about today is this, <coughs> this challenge that we have wanting to create a new life. You know, we're here, you're here, presumably because you have some interest in manifesting change in your life. Good morning, Jen. Um, you know, I mean, it's human to want something other than what we have. And it doesn't matter whether you're a beggar by the side of the road who just thinks, well, it'd be nice to have a pair of shoes. Or you're a millionaire sitting in a mansion, you think, well, it'd be nice to have someone to love. There's always something that we want to add and create and manifest and, you know, have expressed in our lives more than what we have. Um, and it doesn't really matter who you are or what you have now. It's human to desire more. But the thing that gives many of us trouble is that we have desired something for a very long time and it hasn't happened and it hasn't happened and it hasn't happened and we keep desiring it and it keeps on not happening and that's kind of the way that we think we are and how our lives are it becomes our identity that i'm somebody who wants this thing that doesn't happen good morning linda um 
and it you know it becomes who we are and all of our experiences prove to us that this is true you know I tried this and it didn't work I tried that and it didn't work I wanted it so much I did my affirmations you know and still it isn't here and why not (laughs) um and and also there is this thing that we do where we notice where we are and I know I remember I talked about this on Friday you know and, and the beautiful example that my inspiration Joe Dispenser dispenser uses is that when you first wake up in the morning you know oh, I'm awake and sooner or later whether the first thing that you do when you get out of bed is to go to the toilet or go to the kitchen make coffee or you know whatever it is you're lying in bed and you just wake up and then sooner or later the thought of doing that thing that you have done so many times before because it's your habitual morning thing comes into your mind um, and without really thinking about it off you go and do it So I use the example of going into the kitchen to make a cup of coffee, which I never do because I've never had a cup of coffee in my life. I like water. I like kombucha. There you go. Now you know. Um, So, but we have these automatic patterns. We have these habits. We have these ways of being. And we don't have to think about them. They run automatically. And when that's a useful thing that helps you get up in the morning and get ready for your day or exercise or, you know, look after yourself, well, that's great. But we also have automatic habits that limit us. And we have all of these memories because we've been doing these automatic limiting habits for who knows how long. We have all these memories that say this is who I am and this is how my life works and this is what is possible for me. Based upon my past experience, because remember, your brain is an artifact of your life up until now. Now, how does that work? Whenever you have a novel experience, as long as it's novel enough for you to notice it and go, oh, that's different. And, And learning falls into this category, right? You learn a fact. The brain makes new connections, instantly almost almost immediately and I mean you know milliseconds whatever it happens very quickly the brain makes new connections so there you have a change in your brain which by the way is epigenetic it's a genetic change because some DNA has to get signaled and it has to unwind and RNA has to find the right genes along your, the chromosome and, and un, you know they unzip the gene they run along the chromosome they copy off a part of the chromosome and then that gets pushed out of the cell and made into a protein which goes and makes things happen hi Barbara um and all of that happens really really fast as part of the process of making those connections so you just made your gene express itself and it didn't happen you know because you learned something it didn't happen for nothing morning Heather um, and then remember you make that neural connection, like the, literally you make a connection between synapses and then you get a neurotransmitter which talks to hypothalamus, pituitary, whatever it is. I haven't quite worked it all that out and it's probably all of the above depending upon the neurotransmitter. And then you get neuropeptides which talk to your hormonal centers and you have an emotion and that experience, whether it was a learning or you went and had a fun thing that you went and did or something bad happened to you, that experience is now, it's got a network of neurons in your brain and it's associated with particular chemistry that happens in your body. And if you think about that as every experience in your life that both that you remember consciously and mostly that you don't remember, that you don't remember, but it's still, you know, you have repressed memories and you have things that are so known and so habitual you don't even know that you know them now. You just do them. You just are this way and you think it's you. But actually... It's just a bunch of neurons in your brain that have got been fine wired together so much that it's habitual and there's a lot of hardware in there and your body's used to the chemistry and that is just who you are and what you know. It is known to you. It's familiar to you. It's what you know and you have all these experiences in your life that say to you, well, this is true. This is who I am and how it is and that's your identity but it's not actually who you are. It's just how you've built your brain. 
unconsciously, not realizing that this is what happens and how it works. So when you go to design a new future, which is this grand idea that you suddenly, oh, you mean it's possible to manifest change in my life, whatever the hell that means, manifestation. Um, you know, I and, and it's and it's more than just thinking positively, because as we most of us know, if you think a thought, but your body is just sitting there going, yeah, right. Mind and body are not working together and nothing is going to change. Forget it. It's not happening. We have to get mind and body in agreement, which is why affirmations on their own do not work. Because you can say, I'm abundant, I'm healed, I'm loved, I'm everything else. Hi, Bernadette! Until the cows come home. And if you don't find a way to feel it, that information is never going to make it past your brainstem. You'll have a great thought and a body that's sitting there saying, yeah, get real. And we all know what that feels like. So, um, you know, and, and that way of feeling is like, yeah, well, you know, I have these synaptic connections and I have this chemistry and this is who I am. And by the way, who I am is very familiar to me. I'm really used to being that way. Leah, great to see you, honey. Um, I'm really used to being like this. And that, by the way, that's one of the reasons why it's really, really hard to change. Because there's so much hardware in your brain and your cells have gotten used to the chemistry of who you normally are. So if you're normally frustrated, your cells are actually addicted to those frustration chemicals. And if you're normally depressed, your cells are actually addicted to the depression chemicals. And if you're normally happy, your cells actually are addicted to happiness chemicals. It's all the same process. This is we don't realize that. And so we want to create a new future. And this is the challenging. Hi, Shafi. Yes, feeling is the secret. You're absolutely right. Without the feeling, nothing changes. You've got to have a clear intention as well. You've got to marry the two up. You've got to have a clear intention and an elevated emotion. When you get those two in alignment, things are going to change. But it's not a one-off thing. You've got to actually do that more and more and more until it becomes who you are. And you're walking around having the clear intention and the elevated emotion and being that person. And you stop looking for the thing that you want because you're just feeling that way anyway. And then, of course, it can turn up. But what I want to talk about is a step in between. Because this is where I fell over for so long. And the step in between is thinking and feeling a certain way and thinking, I can't see how the thing that I desire, whatever it is, is going to happen. Because all I know is what I know. Oh, Bernadette, we totally get to redo. That's the thing. We can totally get to redo it. You just have to fire different synapses and create different feelings. Just have to do that, she says. It's challenging. Hi, Sophia. But we can do this. So, you know, so to think outside of the neurological box and the biochemical familiarity and the limits to say this is and by the way when you have been depressed for the last however long and you decide you're going to have a different feeling your body will fight you because it's addicted to the sadness of chemicals and also it's going to actually feel really wrong it is not going to feel natural or normal or good or anything to say i'm just going to feel happy for no reason hi liz because we're conditioned from day dot and it's a survival thing too, that we only get to feel good when there's something outside of us that gives us a reason to feel that way. So there's another thing you have to overcome, is you actually have to get outside your own memories of what you think is possible for you, because everything in your brain and your body is about your past. And if you want something different from what you are habitually used to being and inhabiting and doing and thinking and feeling, which is all from your past, you're going to have to think and feel and become and do somebody else and it's not going to feel right. Because you're not being you, you're being somebody else. And we all think it feels fantastic to be the new self we want to be. But it usually feels really, really wrong for a long time. Because you've got to go somewhere new. You've got to get outside the box of what you're used to thinking and feeling. And, and that's hard, <laughs> because we're used to thinking and feeling and being who we are. 
Um, and of course, you know, right about here, I have to say that um, getting outside of that box was not something I could do sitting here conscious, talking to you, thinking, working it out. We all try to work it out. We try to think ourselves into new feelings. That doesn't work. You can't do that. Because feelings happen as a result of something that's happened in your emotional brain, right? The limbic brain. And remember, when you fire that, um, that neurological connection and you get those neurotransmitters, they speak, they communicate with, they signal the limbic brain, the emotional brain, the autonomic nervous system, same thing. Emotional brain, autonomic nervous system. The, the, the autonomic nervous system is what runs your body. Do you think if you're feeding it the chemistry of, a, of, of sadness or anger or frustration or despair or, you know, being overly sexed or whatever it is, and, and you're all rah about it, that you are going to give your body a, a good organized signal about how to be? So when you change your emotional state, um, then you're going to change the chemistry and your body gets a different signal as well. Bonus, big bonus. So work on the feelings, Bernadette, because like I said, you can affirm until the cows come home and nothing's going to happen, honey. you got to get the feeling that goes with it. And for me, I couldn't get the feeling until I got beyond myself. So this work that I do with the meditation of Dr. Joe Dispenza, who is my inspiration because nobody spoke the sense to me and nobody gave me a tool that actually worked for me. This meditation, and you know, for everybody who goes meditation, just like I did, by the way, so I used to say to the people who introduced this to me, I don't like meditation, and I didn't, because I thought meditation was looking at a candle, you know, and I know there's mindfulness and there's following your breath and none of it was really, yeah. um, and part of that was because my brain was so incoherent and I didn't I didn't have the ability to pay attention, but also it just wasn't this kind of meditation. This meditation, and it's a process and it's a skill, and you have to learn it, you have to study it. There's there's no, you know, there's no quick fix with this. Because remember, if your brain, you've mismanaged your energy and built your brain a certain way, and your brain is used to thinking and feeling a certain way, you're gonna have to build it a different way. You're gonna have to change what you're thinking, and you're gonna have to change how you're feeling. You're gonna have to change what you're doing, and this is the tool that I use to do this for me right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the nice thing is, um, Linda, just going sideways for a minute, that if you just pick one, it's going to change all the others anyway. So that's a really useful thing that I heard Joe say. And it's like, yeah, it's true. It's all the same ball of string. It doesn't matter which piece you work on. If you really refine your intention around, I want to be whatever this Everything else is going to shift anyway. So you really can do that and, and know that you're changing your entire life. So for me, what I do in my meditations, and the reason why I'm still a bit dazed and amazed today and, you know, barely here, is because it was powerful and stuff shifted. Berna, good morning. Oh, yay for you, Bernadette. Yeah, changing 58 years. And we can. This is the thing. If you've spent 57 years feeling worthless or powerless or whatever it is in your 58th year you can start yourself a new life where you feel different oh go to dr joe on youtube shafi it's more it's just more um effective <laughs> one of these days i you know but, but the thing is i would just be saying what he says i guess i'd be saying it my way anyway yeah, I know there's a body of work that is to come through me and probably there will be things like that. But right now, it's like it's down the track. I know what I've got to do right now. So I have to get beyond myself. I have to slow my brainwaves down. I know we spoke about that on Friday too. And, and there are ways to do that. And the two things that I talk about which you can play with is coming into your heart because when you come into your heart and you start to breathe in and out of your heart and you open your awareness around you, that's the open focus as well, you start to, you can generate positive emotions that way. Um, and that's, you know, 
generating positive emotions is shifting your emotions, right? And when you practice the open focus, you mean we close our eyes and you put your awareness. And I always just use the heart because it's simple and we can do it quickly. But you can, there are different places in your body you can put your awareness. And then you open your awareness out into the space around those parts in your body. Yes, Dr. Joe Dispenza, exactly. He is the chap who's done the work to figure this all out and make it accessible to us. And I know I explain it really well. I've had people say to me, you know, I, I, I got it from Joe, but you really made the light go on. And I know that's what I'm here to do. Um, but without Joe, you know, getting run over by a truck at the age of 23, six shattered vertebrae, saying no to four surgeons who said, if you don't have this Harrington rod surgery, you're not going to walk again. And he looked at the prognosis and the people who've had the surgery and they're not doing terribly well. And he decided to heal himself, which is like, oh, yeah, cool. But he did. He actually did. In 10 weeks he was back on his feet. In 12 weeks he was back training and at work. And then his whole life changed because you can't have an experience like that without becoming a new person. And off he went wanting to unpack the body-mind connection and how does spontaneous remission work. Um, and, you know, and he's researched all of that. And he, it's still evolving science, but he, he's actually worked that out. And there's a formula to create spontaneous remissions. And there's a formula to manifest change in your life. And they're intimately linked. Can't do one without the other. Um, and, and I just love this. So much for science. And you know, you don't need to really know the science, although you can dig in and you can learn. It's a formula and he teaches it. Dr. Joe totally inspires me. Um, and not just as a teacher, he inspires me as a human being. Um, and I can't tell you how wonderful it is to have somebody inspire me. Because for so long, nobody did. There you go. It's a little mad effect. So to get beyond what you think is true about you, you're going to have to learn how to slow your brain down. And Joe's the one who taught me how to do that. There are other ways. There are other ways. But this is what I find effective. You're going to have to slow your brain down. You're going to have to get into your operating system and start putting in new instructions. Um, I'll reply to that later, Bernadette. Uh, Becoming Supernatural is a great book. But what I suggest you do, anyone who's curious, go to drjoedispenza.com, go to the store and look at his books. There are four of them. Get what resonates for you, okay? Get what resonates for you. Listen to yourself, follow your feeling. And then read it and study it and then get another one. That's exactly what happened to me. I started with the last book and I'm working my way backwards. Other people do it the other way around. Follow your feeling. And absorb, absorb on YouTube. And if you want to be inspired and also learn a lot, look for the testimonial reel. There are 49, 499 stories in it. And I learn something every time I watch that reel. I've been through it five times now. And I'll go back again, but I've got some other things to absorb again now. You know, I just keep learning because it's so powerful. And I've gone over time, but, you know, I'm talking about my inspiration and what's helped me change. And so it's easy to go over time. Big love. Thank you for asking fabulous questions. We'll get into this some more tomorrow, whichever way we go. Until then, love you. Bye-bye.